Hello, everybody. Um, I just uh, I want to make a couple points before we start the song and talk a little bit about what we're going to see. Um, first off, I just wanted to express how humble and honored I am to be able to have such wonderful teammates on the international outreach team. And I know some of them are here today. I see the Cutlers, James and Ellen. You can wave hello. Yeah, there you are. Um, I see Pat, our international member on the team over there. Yeah. I don't know that I saw Doug Barker or Diego or Janet here today, but they're all part of that team too. And it is a joy and privilege to work with all of them. Uh, they are really making things happen and helping. Um, but, you know, today is not about that. <laughs> today is not about the international team. Today is about focusing on Africa. It's a, it's a time to see what the Lord is doing in that part of the world, to see how he is building this church, to see how he's reaching out to people, and to see how God's servants in that area are doing their part to make that happen, too. And so this is going to be a really wonderful time to see some great stories and the activities and, and those things that uh, five of our brothers in Africa are doing. Uh, so I'm going to be sharing my screen and um, they are going to present their stories and I'm gonna be moving through the slides and they'll be presenting to you. You'll see them on the screen up in the corner. You'll probably see me too, cause I'm moving the slides. And then after we're done, we are going to have a question and answer time. And during that, we're really looking for questions. I think you're going to see things. If you're like me, I, I've been rehearsing with them over the past couple of days, and I've just been blown away by the content. It's just wonderful. And I think it'll spark things in your minds that too, that you'll want to maybe follow up with questions and, and ask for more understanding. And that's wonderful. And uh, that's what we're hoping for. All right, so let's, uh, we're going to listen to a song by the uh, International Salvation Army Band. And it's just very appropriate, I think, as a lead in to this presentation. So why don't we go ahead and uh, get that started? Uh, that's wonderful, wasn't it? Okay, I'm going to share my screen. And we will get started. All right. Well, we are focusing on Africa this morning. And there is a map of the world. And see how big Africa is? That is a very large place. And we zoom in a little bit and we see it there. This is Uganda in the yellow circle, and this is Zimbabwe in the other yellow circle, and that is, are the two places we're going to be talking about today, and we have four pastors and brothers from Uganda and uh, also one from Zimbabwe. So this is uh, Uganda. We're going to do Uganda first, and this is the country. And just to give you an idea, it's about 300 miles wide, so it's a big place. And... Uh, Brother John is going to speak first and share with us. Um, I want to show you the area that he is operating in. So that purple area here is primarily where he is. And then he's got a long journey to go over to this little spot over here, which is just in the last few weeks been a development of interest there. So he will talk about that. This is a map of that area. And each of these red stars is a location that he is supporting either with a class or some other way, including the one that's way over here that he has so far to travel. These are not all the locations, but they're most of them. So you get an idea of where he's at. And so, John, why don't you go ahead and take it away? Thank you so much. Uh, greetings all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I am Pastor John Mwangu Zikiuka from Uganda. I am from Eastern part of Uganda. Uh, I stay in Butebo district, but because of new life in Christ, 
God opened the ways and uh, I managed by the grace of God to move in different locations. I move, I connect with pastors because all those locations you are seeing have a team of pastors whom I'm working with. So when I'm going to such a location, I contact with the pastor. So I, all those stars you are seeing, we have the classes of New Life Christ in all those locations. But before that, I don't do only New Life in Christ classes. I have what you call open air preaching. So I think you can slide and we go, yes. So in those locations, I do open air preaching. How should I do it? When I reach, I contact the pastor, then we got the permission from the local leaders. So when we reach in such a place, we start with what you call a door to door preaching. So we do door to door preaching uh, in the morning as we tell the people where we shall come. So in the evening, as you see people, they turn up in a big number to come and hear the good message about Christ, yes. So that's all open air preaching. So we bring people in one place, we tell them how Christ loves them, how Christ brings new life to them. So that is open air preaching. From there, I have what you call new life in Christ classes, yes. That is the team where I normally go to minister. We have 24 sessions, so the students you are seeing, they are doing new life in Christ classes. So they make notes and uh, we, write, we go through the books in our language for them to understand well what has been in the lesson. We continue to go to another slide. Yes, so in another areas, you find that uh, people come in a different places. So I organize for them some lunch because it is hard for someone to sit from around the 10 up to five with empty stomach. So we organize food, they serve themselves as you are seeing to boost the, their energy so that they can sit and go back again to class. So that is how they organize their food. I think we can go to another slide. Yes, so that's all new life in Christ. So when they complete their 24 sessions, we, we give them Bibles because we send them also to go and teach others what they have learned in these four 24 sessions. So those are another things that they are so happy, they are so very excited because they have completed now the 24 sessions. So they are going to be teachers of different areas. So that's how New Life in Christ has transformed the life of many people, and is now covering the big areas. So that's new life in Christ classes. We have, as you see, as, as you saw in the map, dot, dot, there are so many. So from there, I have what you call the tailoring ministry. Tailoring ministry, when I go to minister, I meet people who are in a hard life. They have accepted Jesus Christ, but they have some other business. Now the others have been selling alcohol, now I see, I look for any way to bring them so that at least they can get something which can help them to survive. So I train them tailoring, as you are seeing, they are very happy, they are getting skills. After skills, they go back to their churches and they keep training others. So that is tailoring ministry, which I'm doing, yes. After the course, we award them the certificate to show that they have learned. So that's a certificate, that's a graduation, for last year, it was in November of last year. So that, those are the ones who completed. So they completed the tailoring skill. At the same time, they completed also new life in Christ teachings. So that's how I do. I want them the certificates. Yes, we continue another slide. Yes. So I do widow ministering every Wednesday. I move around in different homes. Whether you see those widows. They cannot move, go to the church because they are so old and now walking is difficult. So I move in their homes. We pray with them. I encourage them. And uh, even the clothes which my students have made, I give them 
to at least to boost them. So that is the ministry which I'm doing. I appreciate you people. I appreciate all your prayers. Uh, and however, donates to support the gospel in Uganda and the Africa at large. It's my prayer that what you are doing, it is falling on a good soil. I appreciate you so much. May the Almighty God bless you abundantly. Shalom. Wonderful. And now uh, Brother Samuel is going to be sharing with us. And as he gets ready, I want to show you the area that he's operating in. It's uh, very close to um, Brother John there. So you see it in the yellow. And this is his map. He has lots of stars going on. And believe it or not, this is not all the locations that are uh, active or going to be active. So anyway, that's uh, why don't you go ahead, Samuel, and you can get started. Yes. Thank you, Brother Rich, for giving me that opportunity to share with my beloved brothers and sisters on this platform. I am Pastor Samuel Young from Uganda, Butevo District. Uh, I'm very privileged and I thank God who connected me to new life in Christ to spirit and truth ministry because she has done me well. She has improved my lifestyle in Christianity. Thank you very much. Uh, that is my road to new life in Christ. Actually, I started training leaders. And as far as leaders, I started training pastors. So I started training pastors, the three pastors I started with became my coordinators in the new life in Christ. So after becoming my coordinators, I started training leaders. In a class one, class two, get, get me to another slide. That is class one at the Padola Center, class one. Training of pastors, reverends, and committee leaders in the church. I continue with class two and class three. That class three, you see that those are class leaders celebrating jubilating after completing the 24 lessons in a new life in Christ. I have also a video clip of pastors who have completed new life in Christ. They are jubilating, they are celebrating their completion of the 24 lessons. Very happy. So you can play for me that video clip to see. As the point is, I started new life in Christ. We made some, we made some challenges of Bible. The teaching, the teaching, and the translation of new life in Christ. So God blessed us with Bible. Well, we may have lost Samuel there. Well, by um, right now, on the, on the, the video, I'm supplying Bible to the class. 
to our people in the new life in Christ, our students. Then we made challenges of reading and, uh, and reading of the Bible. Yes, now you can see on the clip, on the, on the, on the platform, an elderly uh, woman is able to read the Bible in its local language. Bibles are now uh, read by people who, are ne who never went to school. They can read their Bibles and interpret in a new life in Christ. We also go our went after people learning how to read the Bibles. We go to place it. And I'm very privileged. I'm very happy that we receive the speakers progress. So we receive the speakers and I supply the speakers to every two class locations to share. We have now speakers, some have received and some have not yet received. So those are just uh, the equipment kit that we are using in the new life in Christ. The speakers, the panels, batteries and electricity. So here, new life in Christ class is in progress. People are interested in the learning. Very, the turnout is very big. Uh, from class one, class two, and uh, then class three. Class three. So that you can see how people are happy with the new life in Christ. People are attending, it has got, it, new life in Christ has given us a big impact. Uh, of, uh, we have got a big impact in new life in Christ. We have a big turn up. People's lives have changed. People can speak in tongues and interpretations. People can prophesy. And lastly, we also involve the elders. Elders, we also involve the elders to, to attend these classes. And they are very happy for the lessons that are taking on place. Uh, elder, elder people are also interested. They are happy with the lessons. You can see them on the platform. Elder people are also interested in learning new life in Christ. Lastly, uh, we also uh, introduced what we call a community-based organization for the growing of crops. Most likely here we are growing rice, and this rice is to help the elder people and the orphan children, not only inside the church, but even outside our community of Palisa district. So uh, we are now plowing. We have uh, yesterday we took that, that opportunity to harvest the rice. And after harvesting, we are going to grind that life, the rice to supply to our people. As the food, we, we shall sell some to support them with soap and clothing. Because these people can't support themselves. So now how we are the church. We are the community to support them. Thank you very much. Uh, I thank God for connecting me to new life in Christ, for connecting me to uh, Spirit and Truth Ministry. I thank God for the board of directors. I thank God for the brothers and sisters who raise up their hands for the support of this ministry in Uganda and the other, other places at large. I thank the IOT committee, the STF committee. May the Lord rise up your blessings. Thank you. Shalom. Thank you, Brother Robert. Next, we will have Brother Robert is going to talk. And here we have Uganda, and now this is the area that he is covering. It's a large area geographically, and you have to look a little close on this one to see the red stars, but those are the red stars. Some of them uh, are, are those are some, most of the locations that he's supporting, but there are some others too. So why don't you go ahead and start up, Robert? Uh, thank you, Brother Rich. Uh, my name is Robert Opolot director and founder of Shalom Resurrection Life Ministries 
Uganda and Shalom Children's Care Center Orphanage in Uganda. I'm so much excited to be here and to present my story to our brothers and sisters around the globe. Uh, since I joined Spirit and the Truth Fellowship, uh, I established new life in the Christ classes. And so far, 90 students have completed all the 24 sessions and the other students are still running out the classes and soon more are about to complete. I have a total of 363 students undertaking new life in Christ classes. They are so much excited because there are so many false doctrines in Uganda, especially in my area where I reach out. But since we received those teachings from Brother John Shunghait and Sister Sue Carlson, many have been changed and the false doctrine is not now a, a challenge to us. So I run many activities, a uh, new life in the class classes, and another activity, I do Bible distribution. Wherever I get the funding from New Life, from International Outreach Team, I buy Bibles because in the churches where I minister, there's a challenge of Bibles. Those Bibles you see on the screen, you find that in a full church of 50 to 100 people, only two or three have Bibles. So the whole congregation share one Bible and due to over reading, the first and the last chapters get torn out. So you find that in the whole congregation, they have just a half Bible where the first chapters and the last chapters were turned off. So I do Bible distribution in all the regions where I I minister. Those are the pastors whom I meet and I supply Bibles to people whom I minister to. After teaching them new life in Christ, I give out Bibles. Those are our brothers from Elgon Slopes who have suffered many difficulties with land and mudslides. So that is the church around Bukisu region bordering Kenya. I travel there in mountainous area to give out to Bibles. Another activity, we do orphans and vulnerable children. We run an orphanage home in my house, I and my wife. We run an orphanage and we have very many orphans that we care and we support. Uh, we support them with the school supplies, education, because English is, English is not the first language in my location. Many people don't know how to read. So those orphans, we teach them English and other Bible study classes. We provide them with porridge, while at school and some lunch when God provides. So we do also support widows. Uh, I meet, I travel in many places and I have a heart and a compassion on widows. Here widows have a challenge. They, they sleep in a leaking grass just houses. So I got that vision, as you can see, those widows, those are their houses they live in. So during rainy season, they sleep in wet houses, which can leak almost until the rainy season gets off. I've, 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 I've repaired many roofs for widows, and they are really excited. Because I don't have uh, money to build them 
good houses like of metal sheets. I repair their houses. As you can see, that heart, that widow become so much blessed to see us as children of God, showing them love in action. So that's some of the ministry. Because the region where I minister, many difficulties have happened in our region that involve rebel activities of Joseph Konye, Alice Laquena, Tito Okello, Ikaramajongo Kato, Rasaras, and very many, and very many horrific people. There have been mass killing, torture, rape, house burning, looting, abduction, and many other bad activities which have happened in the region where I minister. So they raped the women and the younger girls, and due to that, there is much spread of HIV and AIDS, which have the surveillance death rates in the region where I minister. So you find out in many churches, there are many helpless orphans, and those pastors, they talk to me, and they request me to bring those orphans in my house so that I can care for them and provide them with education. Our sources of funding is through farming. I do farming and the food which we harvest, I feed the orphan and also help the needy widows. Uh, another thing, we have challenges. One of the challenges which I have, as you have seen the region where I minister, the region is big, so there is much need of audio speaker kits so that I can go on and establish many new life in, in the Christ classes because many pastors are inviting me to go and teach, but the challenge of audio kids is still a challenge. We also have a challenge of Bibles. People in our location, mostly those undertaking new life in Christ, they need the Bibles. So you find out if I get a donation of 15 or 10 Bibles, I, I go on and giving two Bibles per each class. So we have a challenge of Bibles. We also have a very big challenge of malaria. Malaria is the most killer diseases in our region. So I thank the international out, outreach team who gave us some funding to purchase the mosquito nets. Those children and the women, they are holding mosquito nets to prevent malaria, which is the most killer diseases in the region where I serve. So one of the challenge is mosquito nettings. I'm praying God to provide many mosquito nets so that I can supply to the regions, especially to those who are coming to learn a new life in Christ and also supply to the orphan. We also have a challenge of classroom blocks because some of the children study It sounds like we lost Robert. Hmm. Environment. Another challenge is also transportation means. We are praying God to provide us with a van so that we can reach far places in Northern Uganda. And also another challenge we have is, is clean water and sanitation. The hygiene is really very bad. And very many people get diarrhea and other waterborne diseases. Uh, also, we have a challenge at the orphanage with a, a modern kitchen to prevent lung cancer. Since my wife is cooking for many children, he is developing coughing in the lungs because the type of kitchen that we have, the smoke, 
surround all the house. Special thanks go, goes to Brother Rich, Sister Sue, Brother David Hutching, Brother John Shunheit, Brother Janet, Sister Janet Speak, Brother James and Brother Doc, and all the spirit and truth fellowship. Thank you so much for standing with us in the prayers. God bless you. We really love you and we appreciate Shalom. Robert Opalok from Uganda. God bless you. Thank you very much, Robert. Welcome. And now we go to Brother Laban. Again, yes. our map our map here, and this is the general area that uh, Laban is, is operating in. He's going to show us more about that here in a moment in his slide. So why don't you go ahead and take it away, Laban. Loving greetings and grace and peace from our Heavenly Father and our Master and Savior. My name, as said, is Laban Paul Sewanyana and my wife, Sarah, we are the overseer of Seek First Bible Standard Ministries, Uganda, Matthew 6, 33. And we are glad to be in partnership with New Life in Christ, a foundation for powerful living, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Uh, I want to appreciate the dear brethren and each one of you, but most especially uh, the brothers who have put forward these studies for us, Brother John and Sister Shu, thank you very much. I would like also to appreciate Brother Doug, who initiated me and introduced me to this wonderful ministry. Then Brother Rick, who has been my tutor throughout the 24 sessions and who has been checking on us. I'll call him a pastor. Thank you so much. And Brother, uh, Brother John, Brother David, uh, is my moderator during Thursday Fellowship. I appreciate you a great deal. You have given us opportunity to minister. And lastly, my prayer partner, James Cutler, he has been a wonderful source of encouragement for me. Now, when I speak about new life in, uh, in Christ, uh, I've come to call this 21st session the great truth of the Bible because they really begin someone and bring new life, new life in a believer. So what have we done? We thought that we could translate this into our local language in Luganda, which is widely spoken, and also uh, put it them on writing so that we can share to very many people. If a request is granted from brother John and sister Shu. I'll be grateful. We can move to the next slide, my brother. Uh, and the next slide, we are going to see our location where we do the work from is, we are, we are operating in three regions, the Eastern region, the Central region, and the Western region. That's where we are, which is marked by the red spot, as you see. Main transport means is vehicle and motorcycle in very difficult roads. So we can proceed rather to show them uh, the next thing is where we live. Of course, we live in a home. As, as, as you come to Uganda, you find us. Seek First Ministry is located in Wakiso. And in the picture, you see uh, that uh, incomplete structure is our headquarter, where we begin and move. But also have a home. Father has provided a home and I have given it to the Lord. Me and my house shall serve him. See my wife and Sarah is there. And our vision is to study, to be approved of Elohim. Second Timothy uh, 2 and 15. We can move to the next one where we shall show also the vision. We are not operating without a vision, a vision and a mission. Uh, up, you have skipped a mission. The mission, uh, okay, the mission, we do work by our hands, we labor, and we do not let load it to the brethren. My, personally, I do farming, I do transportation of missionaries, part of my work. My wife deals in secondhand clothes, and we have a computer uh, system that we are running, as you see. We can move to the next one, dear brother. 
And our mission is making disciples for the kingdom. So what do we do? We teach, we baptize, and pray, and send people to, to preach, as we do. So we preach to ministers. Next is how we do our studies. Uh, how do we do our studies? We have four major conventions in a year. We gather together our ministers and then stay together for some good time and do things. We have the memorial celebration, which is between March and April. We have the baptism and consecration convention. That is when we baptize our members and send them to preach. We have wedding conventions because a church has to be doing that. And finally, we have an annual convention in Wakiso, which deals with general truth. So the next, we shall show you how we do the mission. The mission of all these adults you see have been commissioned, baptized in the name of Yeshua, in the name of the Messiah, and they are sent out to preach the gospel. So next is, uh, next that we are going to see, uh, we are going to see the uh, these are some of the leaders, the fivefold ministry the Father has given us. And from right to left, we have Brother Matia Omondi, Brother Pastor Victor, we have Pastor Charles, myself, Laban, Jared, and Godfrey, because we cannot work without a team. Father has blessed us with that. So we do minister and make disciples. Next that we shall see is some class activities. That what do we do? We are doing a Zoom meeting from Monday to Sabbath, from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. every day. We make sure we connect with our ministers so that we keep the spirit moving. That is what we do. Next, uh, next we are going to see. Uh, next, we are going to see one of the classes. Uh, when it is, which I cannot live without mentioning. Pastor Victor is leading a class. It is operating in the sun and rain because we have nothing so far available, but we have the space. Hallelujah, God has provided. And what has God done with them? We thank uh, the, the spirit and truth for the speaker, you see. But next, you are going to see what the, the door that the Father has opened. Let's see next. Through our activity, one of the classes, the father's opened a door in a Muslim school through a miracle. They have invited us there. And what is happening there? We are preaching to them live and they are putting away the crimes in exchange for the Bible. So that calls for more Bibles. We can move to the next. That is one of the occasions when our pastor, uh, Victor, is preaching to them. So we are looking out for the opportunity to bless the children with the Bible. And next, that is one of the other class, Namali class, where we operate. I've been moving there myself, and that is how it is. One of the activities that I have done is what we see next. One of them married uh, last month. So what is next that I must give? There is a very special woman that I must mention. This place you see has been offered by uh, a Muslim woman, Hajat Najita Nasim, has offered space, has offered his uh, uh, house for us to minister, where we keep our things. She has some challenges with life. She has severe leg pains and she has grandchildren and is putting some requests to us. But we are grateful. We call her an icon of the gospel. Next is uh, another person whom the Father has used so much. That is Ginger Class, operating with Pastor Carlos Charles. They have received the, an audio speaker. And we can continue to the next one, which I cannot leave without mentioning my brother. Yes, that is Musori Class. They have received the audio kit, and they're doing the lessons. Next is a class where we have, uh, we are planning to have, there are so many dropouts from school here. There are so many children, they are working on the leg, so they drop out quickly at school. Father is planning that we can have a kindergarten to have them in school. But next is amazing that I'm, I'm about to tell you. 
Uh, I'm going to tell you about this widow. It's called Neketha Ruth. Uh, in our class, Nafsela has provided uh, he has provided a plot where we operate where we operate our classes. She's a widow. She's a disabled, and she has a daughter. So she puts her request to us, and we do help as the father gives the, the opportunity. This is Brother Noel Wafla with the wife. Uh, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are deacons, and this is Pastor Alex. They lead that class. So finally, uh, in the next slide, I must mention about this. This is Budaka class. Um, next, uh, where we operate, I think very soon I'll, I'll declare to my brother Robert and we take over that class. They are also operating with grace. And finally, yes, this is here we end. We thank the Father for giving us the opportunity to bless the people through the good news of the gospel. Because of because other speaker must speak, let me end here. I know the Spirit is speaking. Father, bless you and see you when you come to Uganda. Amen. Thank, Thank you me. very much, Brother Laban. And now we are going to shift countries. Uh, Brother Isaac is next, and this is Zimbabwe. Uh, it is about 500 miles across from point to point. And this is the area in the circle that Isaac is operating in. He kind of is moving from Victoria Falls or working from Victoria Falls onto Havar, so um, uh, uh, a little bit east. So uh, I'm going to go to this slide and Isaac, it's all yours. Thank you and uh, greetings to all the saints here present. I would like to start by thanking uh, Spirit and Truth Fellowship for the op for creating this opportunity to share our testimonies and the good things that the Lord is doing in our lives. I'm not going to stop mentioning the international outreach team for the support, the continued support they continue giving us. Uh, let me also thank my colleagues who are here with me. I've got uh, Caroline on my side, a woman who has always stood with me in the in the ministry work i've got my co-workers ezekiel lumuno and miriam thank you so much and and may god bless you my name is isaac dube i'm in victoria falls zimbabwe zimbabwe is in the southern region of africa neighboring zambia malawi botswana south africa as well as tanzania and uh, thank you so much for an opportunity. Let's move to the next slide. Right, our great, uh, uh, our main objective is, is founded in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, which says, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our main thrust is to reach out to and address the social problems that affect the pro that affect our community. We have, the, as we can see in the picture, that is the impact of domestic violence. Just like it is happening anywhere else in the world, domestic violence is there. So then, our main target is to reach out to couples who have got issues, marriages who have got problems. We sit down with them, we provide counseling, we find out the solution, we try to find out the problem, why they are fighting. At times you could find that it's an economic, it's economic challenge because in the house there's no money. So we don't promise them money, but what we do, we train them in life skills development, what we call self-help. Let us find ways of, of, of managing the resources that we have. As a man, the legal resources that you have, you try to manage it nicely and, and, and together as a family so that at the end of the day, we don't have worry. We want our vision is to see blooming families in societies. Thank you. Let's move to the next slide. Then, okay, right. Then as, as we identify gender-based gender, gender -based violence issues, we then reach out to villages. And as we reach out to villages, 
we gather, we mobilize women alone, we discuss, we hear their issues. What are their problems? Why do they find themselves in domestic violence? Are they perpetrators of domestic violence? Are they victims of domestic violence? We identify those social issues because they are still living in societies, a society where there's still problems. Then after that, we introduce them to the word of God. This is where now new life in, in, in Christ teachings begin. So these are men, we separate them. These are women, separate them from the men. Let's move to the next slide, my brother. We also gather out men alone. We call these men's forum. We discuss issues because you would find this more major statistics of our society. It is men who are found as perpetrators to domestic violence. Why are you why why do you find yourself committing or perpetrating to domestic violence? So these are some of the issues we address as men. We encourage them, we then introduce them to new life in Christ teachings as men alone. Let's move to the next slide. Then after that, we also have the challenges of early child pregnancies and marriages, forced marriages in our society. This is a man who is pushing out his 12-year-old girl, the 13-year-old girl, into getting married, into, into getting marriage, probably to older, older men who are about 40 or 50, 50 years in exchange of money, in exchange of food, in exchange of water. So what we do, we don't just leave out that situation because we are called to make disciples. We sit down with them. We then talk to them to say that this solution to your hunger, the solution to your problem, it is not to force your child so that you receive money, but the solution is Jesus Christ. We then don't end there. We teach them life skills trainings. Life, we engage them. We, we try to to find resource person who can train them. Is it in agriculture? Is it in, in, in serving? Is it in entrepreneurship? What is it that they can do? And then from there, we form men's forums. Thank you. Let's move to the next slide. Then from there, we also have, a, 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 Victoria Falls is rather blessed by so much natural resources. We have got more major wonderful trees. We have got wonderful rivers. We have got rocks. We have got mountains. So there's still a, a, a challenge of ancestral and, and, and idol worship in our communities. Why? Because the word of God is, is not yet reached those areas. So what we get when we get to these communities, we mobilize people and say that we don't worship trees, we don't worship rocks, but we worship God, we worship Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the one who died on the cross. So all our issues, we need to, they are centered upon God. We need to trust God in all our problems. Let's move. To, then from there, we get to these villages. When we get to these villages, what we normally do, as you can see, life taking new life Christ in, in, to the villages. What we do, we conduct dances, we invite the communities. This is where they come, and then we discuss, and then from there we introduce them to the new life in Christ teachings. We've got speakers, we, we discuss with them, and then from there we form classes in new life in Christ classes. Let's move to the next slide. Then we also utilize the national radio program. We have got a national radio program in Victoria Falls. It's called Breeze FM. So what we normally do in this radio, we discuss social problems, and then we share our details, where we are found, where our, our mission is to say that as a community, we, we want to see a community peaceful in marriages, a community where the youth are taken care of, where children are taken off. And then from there, people, then we give them directions, the address where we are found. And we have, we have this, this radio program, it has really worked very, very, very powerfully and amazingly as a tool of evangelism. Thank you so much. Let's move to the next slide. Then after that, then we also have, we have a women's fellowship. Thank you so much to Sue, uh, who is facilitating the monthly fellowship, which Caroline is attending every month. So immediately after the fellowships, women, they gather themselves. They identify they need to mobilize more women to say that this, this month will be putting on white. We are not buying these clothes, but white is, is generally found. So you put on white. And then from there, they mobilize other women. Through this approach, 
also women are coming. It is a very powerful tool where women are, are, are able to come. We don't end there in life, in new life in tribe, new life in class teachings. We also introduce what we call women's self-help groups. You need to provide savings. If your husband gives you $50, you need to save. If you get $30, you don't spend it all. You save for the future, save for next year. Every month, women, they put on different dresses, affordable dresses, where then they, then they come and share together as women. Also, they even cook together and eat together, share water together. Thank you. Let's move to the next slide. Yes, it's, uh, so in that picture, we see immediately after, after the training, after the after Caroline attending the training, so, so then they come, women come, and then they share. They will be discussing. Here they were discussing about Miriam. They were discussing about Miriam. This is the training which they attended, which Sue facilitated. So then after that, she invites other women, and then they teach together. They train each other together. We'll be discussing using pictures, using placards, using information written on the walls. Thank you. Let's move to the next slide. Right, and then this is the community center. Thank you so much. We have got we have got uh, private donors who helped us develop the community center. This is a place where we worship. This is a place where we gather. This is a place where we even share together as as a fellowship, as Richard Fellowship. So thank you so much. And this fellowship is yes is, is that this is it, it's a place also where we we conduct counseling sessions at our home at the community center. And then after this. We don't just end here also. We are then trying to find means of generating our own income through the Harvest Acres, which is there. Already the community center was commissioned on the 28th of January this year. It was then published to the community to say more people can come, they seek help, and then from there we provide guidance on how they can then accept Jesus Christ as Lord of, as Lord and, and, and and savior of their lives. Thank you so much. And this is the video. This is the video, the short video which we took about the community center, just an introduction to the community center. Thank you so much for the time, Rich. May God bless. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. We are so grateful for what the Lord has done for us today, the 28th of January 2024, as we are commissioning the community center. Uh, this is the place of joy. This is the place of love. This is a place of refuge. This is a place where we all gather to fellowship together as children of God who form one body. Hallelujah. So we have therefore dedicated this place to, to God. Amen. Let God be the one who leads. Thank you all of you for sharing today. It has been wonderful. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. There we go. And we would like to entertain questions at this point. <laughs> 